before water even ends up in our reservoirs and later our homes, it undergoes six natural processes governed by the heat of the sun. Let's take a closer look at the water cycle. Firstly, there's evaporation where water is heated and changes from a liquid to a gas rising in the air as water vapour. Secondly, there's condensation where the water vapour cools, loses its energy and becomes water droplets liquid once again, getting bigger and bigger in size. We get our water back through precipitation. Yes, you've got it. The rain, the hail, the snow and the sleet is coming our way as water precipitates back to the ground. Known as runoff or accumulation, we then have these large quantities of water flowing into streams, rivers, seas, lakes, reservoirs, and so on. Through infiltration, water is absorbed into rocks, soil, and forms groundwater. And finally, it's through transpiration where the water travels up through the roots and the stems of plant before being released through tiny openings in the leaves and the flowers. And that's when, once again, water evaporates into the atmosphere, continuing the water cycle. What will your children be learning about in Key Stage 2? Well, at school, they may be taking part in experiments to show each process within the water cycle clearly so firsthand they can make observations. You can also help them at home with our labelling activities, our PowerPoint presentations, other resources to help further understand this wonderful natural process which is integral to the life of the planet. Have a wonderful day and do check out more detailed definitions on our Twinkle Parenting Wiki page. Bye bye.